Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has announced the continuous voter registration CVR nationwide. The statement which was made known to the public has the INEC National Commissioner for Information, Fester Sokoe, saying that the case at the Federal High Court on the terminal date for the CVR exercise came up last Wednesday, 29th June 2022. And as such, the request of the Commission was granted by the court to an accelerated hearing and the matter to be adjourned to Monday the 4th of July 2022 for hearing of the substantive matter. To this end, all resident electoral commissioners and electoral officers have been directed to continue with the exercise pending further directives from the Commission. Now with this statement, it automatically lays on the prospective candidates to take advantage of the window that has been opened to ensure they carry out their civic responsibility to now own the right to participate in the forthcoming elections and subsequently as they will stand not to be disenfranchised. This will form the focus of our discussion today on the program Nigeria Today. You will soon meet my guests in a moment. I am Lydia Odijochi. Welcome to the program. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. Start Times, Channel 101, Greek TV, Channel 703, GSTV, Channel 419, and Go TV, Channel 46. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles, Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nt.gov.ng. Here's a round to Nigeria today. Joining me in the studio to discuss the topic, INEC extension of the continuous voter registration exercise. With me is Chris Ajiri. He is the DG, Director General of Flag Foundation of Nigeria. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Always good to have you. Thank you. And of course, it's also a pleasure having Paul James, Program Manager, Elections Yaga Africa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's start with the topic. INEC extends continuous voter registration. What's your submission on this development? Is the right step in the right direction. As already as uh, court cases, mm -hmm. the yearnings and aspirations of the people, the pressure from the public, motion from the House of Representatives, INEC as a patriotic organization must have to pay attention to the yearnings and aspirations of course they are working for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's what INEC has done. And I commend INEC for that. Okay. And um, so it's, it's expected that's what have been people like us have been conversing, walking, talking, thank God, all of a sudden. Mm. So the development excites me as an individual, as a Nigerian, as a social affairs analyst, as a committed citizen. Mm. It excites me that these young people suddenly have woken up. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing. It's miraculous. This is one of the one of the best things that's happening to Nigerian polity. And then the issue is that what motivates them? How come they've just woken up? That's not to say that they've been sleeping for the past one year. Oh. These cells have been on for the past one year. It's sometimes they even almost come to a point of abusing people like us when you are, you know, jokingly, do you have your PVC? Mm -hmm. Thank God for the Electoral Act. Mm -hmm. It's the present signing to law. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, this, this, this uh, movement mm -hmm. and the young people is inspired by the voter, by the 2022 uh, um, Electoral wow. Act. It's, it's Electoral Act inspired. Okay. At least from that, they've seen the transmission of results as come there, and they've quite they seen practically the Anambra election, FCT, you know, AKT election. So, in other words, it's sinking in amongst that Nigerians that their vote will count. count. And there's no other way of a permissible change 
the Nigeria of our dream and aspiration cannot come about without citizens participating in the electoral process, obtaining their PVCs, going to cast their votes, mm. and then voting the candidate, at least out of the three major ones we have. Mm. Out of the three. Mm. You must have to settle for somebody. Mm. They didn't do that. Yeah. So it's commendable. I'm happy about it. I commend all of us for it and let the temple, you know, be sustained. That is the change that is coming. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, Paul, now with this continuous water registration, like he said, a reawakening, especially among the youth, everybody wants to go get their PVC now. Do you think we have enough facilities at the various centers to really capture all the candidates for the registration? What do you think? I think INEC has been very strategic in its engagement of the CVR exercise, mm -hmm. especially because they know Nigerians and the 11th hour syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, the exercise started on June 28th last year. Yes. And if you go by the records from when it started up until like December of last year, the turnout at the, some of the centers has not been very impressive. Now, some of the challenges we have highlighted at Yaga Africa in our reports when we started the engagement, some of them were only uh, recently been addressed because, of course, either couldn't have stretched itself at that point in mm -hmm. time to be able to understand where the issues are and fix the issues. And so, uh, not like I waited until now, but there is something that uh, really spurred the interest in the participation. And for me, that is where we need to make the nexus between the quality of the candidates we have by political parties and also youth participation. Because we have also reduced election to just that thing that happened on election day, especially young people with the understanding that it's a connection between participation even before the election day proper. That is what happened before, during and after election. Mm -hmm. And that is why at the Aga Africa we also have been clamoring to see that young people join political parties especially so that they will be part of that decision making mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Now that the candidates nomination processes have happened and also different sort of narrative from me, some people agree that a few individuals the timing who becomes uh, like the candidates for political parties and now they know there is another that option and also latching on uh, what Chris has said about the uh, new provisions of the electoral act and also uh, the kind of transparency that we have seen in some of the recent elections that have been conducted in the recent past, I think is part of what has spurred this interest in the process. And on its part responded swiftly to this. In the week of June 6th through June, uh, June 11th, mm -hmm. we have seen INEC deployed additional 209 machines mm -hmm. to Kano, to Lagos, and to the five uh, states of the southeast. Okay. Some of the challenges we have highlighted are concerns around even capacity of INEC personnel. The machines malfunctioning in some centers, mm -hmm. and also uh, the lack of information about the location of some of these centers. Okay. So we have seen That's improvement in that regard. Mm -hmm. For instance, now uh, you got an extended circulars that will tell people, oh, we are, for instance, in Abuja, and I think I have created, I have created about nine or there about centers. I know one in uh, the Life Camp, GSS uh, Secondary School in Life Camp, okay. about nine centers across the city center, which is what we have been shouting for before now that. Good that ANEC is developing this severe exercise, but there has been, been a, there has not been enough information about that. But in the last two weeks thereabout, we have seen an improvement also okay. in communication in part of INEC and also uh, young people truly engaging yeah. the process as they should. <laughs> um, one other point to mention is also that in the last three weeks, between the week of June 6th and 11th, mm -hmm. through the efforts of Yaga Africa and other collaborators in Lagos, in one center alone, the Taba Valewa Square, Anne registered 11,000 young people. Okay. Last week in Abuja here at the Old Parade Ground, between the 20th and the 25th of June, Anne registered 17,000 young people. Mm -hmm. So I think these are efforts that uh, Nigeria should comment and something okay. we also need to encourage Anne to continue to do. Okay, now, now, Chris, let me let me ask you this: how, how do you think Nigerians can be encouraged to appreciate this <coughs> extension and make the best use of it? Uh, yeah, you you talked about INEC. Sorry, before I get to that, you know, facilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, let me make a case for INEC. INEC is uh, enough facilities. Okay. 
And of course, I just heard from a reliable source that, look, if you gather yourself in clusters of 50, mm -hmm. and they can come there and capture you. That's good. So that's, that's you know, of course, it's, that's commendable. Mm -hmm. Then so far, back to your question. Yes. You were saying... Um, How can Nigerians be encouraged to appreciate this experience? <coughs> Encouragement extension? is that I am a living witness. Okay. I have been in election observation. I know what I saw in Anambra, left city here, and the city. Since after coming back from this, I've been excited. Seven days ago, I was here, there about, okay. Mm -hmm. I've been excited. The encouragement is as we're saying, as we're encouraging them. As I'm telling you, my fellow compatriots, if you don't have your PVC, go for it. Mm -hmm. But there's something, a point we're missing. Mm -hmm. uh, Annex should communicate more. Here, yeah, Annex said there are 20 million PVCs on collector oh. about last month. I'm sure a visible fraction of these 20 million is among the people that in the bank were going to affect running now to do that. Mm. Whereas their problems are that of migration. Mm. By the time I make ways to harvest the double ones and delete them, a lot of them will still be disfranchised. I think the major I make message should focus on if you have ever registered, mm. if you have ever registered, if you have ever obtained PVC, if you have ever registered, whether you go there, whether you collected it or not. Annex should provide, of course, in the Annex website, there are spaces for it, but there should be more emphasis on migration. Mm. People who are either to, renew, to, to uh, ref, their, the faces, the, some of the cars are damaged, mm -hmm. that don't need fresh f physical capturing. And, you know, the forms, the, 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 the information is already there in the, mm. the Annex database. And a lot in Annex that this is what Needed. That is why 20 million, 20 million businesses. <laughs> of course, these are produced with money, mm -hmm. a lot of money. I don't even know how INEC is managing in their budget. And by when people are saying continue, continue, it's money, of course. But that apart, the, we have had a cases, I mean, ours, we are coming from a society where there is virtually like no lack of political education, no civic education. So people have been docile, they've just woken up. To the extent and incrementally that is going, it is encouraging. Everything cannot happen in one swoop. But then everybody that is willing, and of course, it is a constitutional provision. As a citizen, as a citizen, you are duty bound. It's your constitutional right, it's your legal right. And you're not asking much. Be part of who governs you, be part of the process. Put your mouth and put your energy and put your mouth. If I vote for you and you won the election and you're not performing, I deserve all the rights, legal, constitutional, to hold you accountable. accountable. It's not a matter of, because we don't, you do, if you, this energy we are spending going to stand, of course it is money. You are investing yes. in the electoral process. You are investing in the candidate you believe that can deliver Nigeria, that can take us to the higher ground. If you vote and the person fails to, that is where citizenship accountability comes to okay. hold leadership accountable. That's if you don't vote, you lack the necessary moral constitutional right to, to hold somebody accountable. Okay, okay now let, let's, let's pause here a bit for a break. Let's feel what Nigerians on the streets are saying on our topic. And our correspondent, Ulusha Yadiago, brought this back for you to see. One thing with Nigerians is that we like a uh, last minute rush, which is not really good for us. But thank God for the uh, benevolence of INEC and listening to the demand of the masses to extend the date. So I want to encourage all Nigerians, those who have not registered to take advantage of this extension. If really want to see the change we are all clamoring for. Everybody should take this, seize the opportunity now that the extension is indefinite. So you go and register yourself. Now you have the, all the opportunity now. You cannot say you are a INEC disallow you not to register. They have, they have given you the, enough time now to go and register. And those who are eligible to register, which is uh, the new upcoming youth from 18 years and above. And uh, if you have your PVC previously and then uh, there's any discrepancy, 
then you go and correct everything. It's beautiful because it will give me the edge to actually do mine because I'm not registered before and I want to really register because I want to vote this time around. Um, it's actually a welcome idea. I, I wish um, all Nigerians will come out to get their PVC so that um, next um, election will be actually what they want. Nigerians should be able to vote for who they want this time around and stand and defend their votes. Welcome back. The program is still Nigeria Today and we're still discussing INEX extension of the voter, continuous voter registration. My guests are still here with me in the studio and incidentally, we have a guest joining us via Zoom, Dr. Aminu Hayatu, political scientist, Bayero University, Kano. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. We also want to hear your own, uh, how you would react to this extension. What would be your submission to this development? Okay. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, I apologize for the, I have a poor network here because it's uh, heavily raining, uh, but I think uh, I can manage to speak uh, as you can poorly see me. Uh, actually, I, uh, I have been following the developments and um, I think so far, uh, I, INEX uh, boldness to extend uh, the period for the voter registration is quite commendable. Although um, some political factors that uh, come into play in, uh, in the course of uh, the issues arising from voter registration are also uh, things that cannot be uh, avoided. For example, we've seen a situation whereby, uh, you know, uh, organizations like Serap had to, uh, I mean, drag INEC to court uh, for, uh, to actually, you know, secure a decision to say that uh, INEC uh, cannot, uh, you know, halt uh, or oppose uh, the registration of uh, voters as at 30th of June. So we also understand that uh, certain developments, INEC need to be given time, for example, uh, to be able to compile this voter registration and make them ready against the period of election so that uh, it doesn't uh, actually be the case at it, uh, as, as it has been in the past, a situation whereby voter register was not ready and a rush to compile the voter register actually rendered the whole exercise into uh, an erratic and uh, quick monophalent exercise that actually uh, many of the voters could not find their names. But what we are seeing today is actually INEX consideration of the fact that despite Nigerians uh, like a digital attitude uh, not to not go and register in time, we have this attitude as the lady who was interviewed was saying, we always like rushing things at the last hour. But we must also not forget the fact that the developments that followed after uh, the primary elections has also prompted, uh, you know, uh, citizens to actually rush to go and vote because of the caliber of candidates that are being produced in the election and because of the heated nature of the uh, 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 political uh, environment and atmosphere. And of course, because of the political, religious and ethnic undertune that is actually emerging from the process of uh, producing candidates by political parties. We have seen situations uh, in this country recently where uh, members of religious organizations are making it mandatory for their followers to go and uh, you know, uh, do their voter registration. And we have seen also in some part of the country a situation where many voters are encouraged to go and vote, uh, I mean, get their uh, PVC for the fact that uh, despite their population, uh, a, a quite appreciable number haven't gone and uh, uh, acquired their PVC. So I think uh, other political factors apart from the, you know, INEX, uh, you know, organization and push for the voter registration have actually played in the attitude of voters towards uh, obtaining their PVCs. So much. Now, let me, let me ask you, uh, Paul. Um, you know, uh, actually, prior to this extension, there were some civil society groups that were of the opinion that there should be no closing date. It should just be left, left 
well, open. If you go by the electoral uh, section line of the electoral mm -hmm. act, for instance, it said the voter registration service can continue until at least 90 days to an election. Okay. Yeah. If our election is to happen on February the 25th, the first round of the 2023 elections, mm -hmm. then you got like um, early November or uh, late October to say INEC will close the window, but not also forgetting that. Um, just like Doctor had also alluded, um, it's not just about the CVR. There are other things that also will follow, like mm -hmm. cleaning up of the register. There will be need to do display claims and objections. Mm -hmm. There will be need to do the, uh, the mm -hmm. whole lot of clean up before mm -hmm. yes. the final list will be ready mm -hmm. for the election. I guess that is what yes. INEC wants to do. But I also don't see INEC working against Nigerians. I feel INEC has been strategic in its communication. If you look at even the current communication, INEC is not specific about when the CVR will end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. just said they extended the CVR yeah, right. because yeah. as Nigerians, if you say CVR is going to end in September, mm. a lot of us will wait until okay. September to start rushing okay. after INEC. So I feel like this That's is it. very this is very strategic on the part of INEC. Mm -hmm. And for the CSOs, of course, sometimes you also need to push INEC a bit to remind <laughs> INEC that, look, we are, we are here for the people, we are the conscious of the people, and we need to do what we think is okay. right by the people. Okay, now, Chris, mm -hmm. I know you have some, you still want to say one or two things, especially you're reacting to Dr. Haya today. Yes, I just concord <coughs> to what he said, all the issues he alluded yeah, there were one or two cases of uh, harassment of uh, people by head loops. Yeah, one in Lagos, one in Abuja here. That's a one-off thing. I, I am inclined to believe you know, that since there's no reoccurrence, that the authorities responded accordingly mm -hmm. in that regard. Another thing is that the ethnic uh, undertone and the religious undertone about these things. For God's sake, please, let me appeal to all and sundry. These things ought not to be. If you have a right, full right, constitutional right, as a citizen, irrespective of your religion, irrespective of your ethnic uh, uh, background, irrespective of your political affiliation, irrespective of whether you're educated or not educated, so long as you're a Nigerian, a Nigerian, a, a, an authentic Nigerian, you are almost duty bound to obtain your PVC ready to, do, to vote for election. Nobody should harass you. You are not well, well this ones we are doing is just because there's lack of civic education mm -hmm. to people to inspire people, to educate okay. people, mm -hmm. to exercise people to go. Right. And so no issues of religious polit uh, religious political affiliation, tribal things should not come in here. Okay. All right. Now Thank let you. me go quickly to uh, Dr. Ayatu. Let's hear your closing remarks on this matter as we round up. Sorry, come again, please. Let's hear your closing remarks as we round up. Well, 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 well. I think uh, uh, any any any, patri uh, any patriotic Nigerian should uh, should be able to tell citizens of the country that uh, uh, it is absolutely necessary for each and every one of uh, us as citizens to go and uh, uh, get our PVCs because. Uh, a lot of the political issues that citizens have concern over are actually embedded in that PVC, which many haven't yet seen the importance of going to get. And as long as uh, Nigerians uh, do not actually acquire their PVC to take decision on the kind of leadership the country needs, on the kind of socio-economic or political direction the country should, 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 should follow, or on the kind of security situation that is acceptable to them, uh, we, uh, citizens will continue to see problems because decisions about who to govern them will not be reflected in the, in the people that will emerge as leaders of the country. So I think it's important INEC continues, and INEC need to actually step up its own, uh, uh, you know, uh, awareness on the need to actually uh, get uh, the PVCs and do people to do voter registration, and also to further enlighten people on the modalities and the technicalities involved, because many of the people who haven't gotten their PVCs 
are actually uh, in the rural areas who do not go to school, do not understand uh, some of these cumbersome processes, mm -hmm. and will need to have to be put, uh, put into the through. processes yes, to thank make you. understand. Okay, that. now that's that's the much we can go take on the on the program. I really like to appreciate my guests on the program, Dr. Aminu Ayatu, political scientist, Bayero University. Yes, you joined us late, but very useful contribution. Thank, thank, you. thank you. And also, I want to appreciate Chris Ajiri. Mm -hmm. Director General, Flag Foundation of Nigeria. Yes. Always a pleasure having Thank you. you. And Thank of course, you. Paul yes. James, Program Manager Elections, Yaga, Africa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you us. very much for the invitation. Well, that's it on Nigeria Today. We thank, we thank our viewers for always being a part of it. And don't forget, Nigeria Today is live weekdays at 7.30 p.m. in the evenings. And you can watch this and other episodes at www.youtube.com slash ntnu 24 hub I'm Lydia Odijochi. Have a wonderful weekend. See you on Monday. Happy New Month. Bye-bye.